Okay, part six. This is Athena Jezik. Part six on the full body routine. Moving to the abdomen. So there's some really different things that I'm finding here. Joy is very flexible and she works with a lot of back bends and walkovers and that kind of thing. So there's some very different tension points in these muscles that are closely attached into the ribs. Very strong, strong, supportive muscles. The very, they have a very good consistency to them. Okay. Now working the abdomen, you always want to go in a clockwise direction. Although there is a few exceptions to the rule. If you're working with lymphatics, you want to start the other way to open up the, the avenue. And so I've modified a little and I'll show you that modification. Okay, so it's good to start by wrapping upward just to get a feel for what's going on from the back to the front, up over the ribs. And I'm gonna work this from one side because of the positioning of the camera so I'm a little off of my uh, physical technique here, but it's still, you're still able to wrap. It's just that this is much harder on the therapist to do it opposite like this. Okay, so we're going to just start here and now come up and around because this is, I'm working more into the actual um, intestinal track by going where I'm going. And then from the midline, you can just work into the muscle, so you're not going to go into that deeper part, just working more superficially into that muscle. Now here's where there's a, like a little knot, and it's not attached to the ribs. So I'm going to hold this and see if I can get some of it. It's one of these that is so... Uh, tight and tense that it would probably take quite a bit of work and I have a feeling that there's some trapped lymph in there just because of the way it feels so to be drained a little bit lymphatically would also help the the softening and the releasing of that knot It's changed shape a little, but it's still there. And you know, you can't always get things out on the first or second try. Sometimes the body will only move so far with it because anytime the body has to change what it's doing, it's there's a little bit of shock going on with it and reorganization. Now here from the midline over, I'm starting high and going down because this is generally the clockwise direction.
And here we have a matching one on the other side. It feels almost exactly the same. I'm just letting that unwind. It's very tight. It doesn't seem to be painful. Okay, then you can work into the abdomen, taking up through this area here. And you're dealing primarily with muscle. You're not going so deep that you're getting into any of the into the organs. Here's where the liver is, and it's good to work that a little bit, give it some movement forward and backward. Also giving the chance for some of the ribs to be a little bit manipulated. And then over here we have pancreas and spleen, and we also have the fundus of the stomach right in here, this area. You want to feel softness in the abdomen, the healthy muscles. You want to hear, oftentimes you want to hear some kind of peristalsic action. That's not a bad thing. And if somebody is heavy, that has a little bit more fat tissue across here, you have to know where those muscles are and work down into that. What I'm doing here is I'm just finding that opposite point and seeing if I can direct energy down through to see if we can soften it this way. This is something that is getting into the more subtle, advanced techniques. It's not, this side has changed a little bit, but this side still feels like it's actually the more that I feel into this side here, it feels like this might be an extension of a rib. It's hard to know without an x-ray, but it it's beginning to show itself that it's a little bit more onto the rib itself. So here's that rib. This is why it's important to know, keep looking at anatomy books. Yeah, this is the ribs come in here, but then there's a protrusion here. So there might be just a little bit longer floating rib on that, I'm not really sure. It feels like there's some muscle tension around it. But the main thing here is if it's not bringing any discomfort, it's probably not anything to be concerned with. So at first, glance, it did seem like the, uh, it was the uh, muscle tissue, but as the muscle tissue soft, softened just enough, it does feel like there's probably a little bit longer floating rib going on with that. 
I could be wrong, but that's what it's feeling like. I'm going to slip my hand underneath her back and, and just work the abdomen this way with a full flat hand. And another thing you can do when you're working into the abdomen is take the hands down to the SI and then just work back and forth a little bit to see the range of motion in the hips. You're right on the hip, so hip, um, hip bone with the palm of the hand. You can also put your fingers in and feel if there's a, a space between the SI joint or in the SI joint, I should say. There should be a little spacing there. Sometimes it's quite compressed. And you can work yourself up the back to about the middle where the rib cage is. And then you can also do some range of motion in the ribs, bringing them from side to side. Not everybody likes to have their abdomen worked. And sometimes when the, the abdomen and the bowel is full because of maybe faulty diet or, you know, not enough movement in the intestines, sometimes it can be kind of painful. So you want to be mindful of all of that stuff. Always pay attention that you're keeping the client in as much comfort as possible and giving them thorough work from origin to insertion, being mindful of what you're feeling, learn from each person because each person's body is a little different even though it's incredibly the same. It's those subtleties that you learn from, from the differences and that will just enhance your practice and it'll enhance your ability to be able to do things that are assisting it to unwind and correct. The work that I do, I don't really feel like I'm fixing anything. I feel like more I'm giving space for the body to, to correct itself. Okay, we're going to show, I'm going to show you one more little thing here, and that is getting down into this hip, which is ticklish sometimes. Um, it's important to have these muscles that are attaching here to be somewhat mobile and soft in order for the, the backside of the pelvis to take its fulcrum and its position from the SI. So to hold the SI in place, or just the fingers between the SI, you can take the fingers and right on the edge of this, the iliac crest, uh, pull those fingers in more towards the, the hip bone itself and just wait. And what you'll find happening, you want the pads of the fingers, you're just applying enough, enough pressure to feel like there's that donkey donkey, like you're leaning into the tissue and it's leaning back into you. As it begins to release a little more, you're going to feel it pulling you, pulling your fingers deeper. But it's not going to pull them straight in. It's going to be somewhat of a twisting and a turning. So just, again, follow that anatomy. And we're getting in there deeper. And you want to be sure that you're staying close into that hip bone. Okay, we've got some good movement going on here. There's a lot of releasing. And there it goes.
And you can push the hip forward this direction. And there, it affords a little bit more room because it's squeezing together, opening up at the SI and bringing that a little inward to itself. And you can still get some release along the attachment of the hip. And when it does release, it should feel like it's going real smooth. Even if you come upon a little tension area, you'll feel it. It feels kind of like it just irons out. It just flattens out. And so there it's, it's much softer in through there, which helps for the uh, deeper attachments as well. And you can get in, in behind that a little bit too. But some of this is getting into a little bit more precise work where it's a little more involved. So I'll be on the opposite side of what I usually work, so everything seems in a different location, but here's the SI. Here's that, taking the fingers in. Slowly. I'm going to use my thumb because it's too hard on the in that in this position. Joy is very much in touch with her body and she is feeling all these little quivers and shakes and softenings in the body. It really gets to be quite amazing because when a person is that tuned in, you not only feel it where you're working, it oftentimes shows itself in places very far removed from where you're working. So there we go. That feels better. Taking both hips, you can also pull them in together like that and get a little opening where the hips will open in the back like that, the sacrum being in the middle. So that helps to open up that space. You can do that and then go in from the back. And this can be explained out much more thoroughly with much better direction um, in an advanced work workout tape. And what you want to see is a nice alignment with the hips and the bottom of the ribs, which we did come to a conclusion that she, since the muscles have softened around here, this is a little bit longer, uh, it feels like it's a little bit longer floating rib. So, and Joy felt that same sort of thing that I felt, so we've got that solved, at least to our satisfaction. But you want to make sure that you have this alignment here. And when you're looking from the feet, you want to see also that chin coming right to the center. And of course the feet with the same type of rotation, not one farther than the other. And if you see any deviation from that, then the point is, is to try to figure out where that is by feeling where the restriction is so that you can get whatever foot is overextended or bowing inward, rotating inward, you can get that to align. And that you're going to find oftentimes back in the hip there, but you'll also find it in the sphenobasilar junction, possibly the jaw, and also things that are going on with the neck. So to work towards this alignment, the body knows where to go, but as each bone is placed on its fulcrum on every movable joint, placed on the fulcrum in balance, that's the best way to go into workout classes and things like that because you're going to be developing yourself on that alignment rather than slightly off the alignment. So then to just end up with everything is just a nice resting of the head, hand on the head, other hand on the chest, and I just like to feel 
the different areas of the chakras. And brush people off. And be in a grateful attitude about being able to work on somebody because their body is their most precious thing and it's an honor to have them trust you enough to put your hands on them and do what you feel is right for them. So it's bringing in a new consciousness towards the way that we're looking at our bodies and the way that we're treating our bodies and bring us into maybe a fuller, richer life.